little smoky river, you've been good to me. From every fallen timber, be a strong standing tree. How's it going, everybody? It's Dusty Tucker. Um, I have a uh, actual gun review for you guys today, or at least a first look at a firearm that I had recently purchased. Um, and the reason I'm just doing an entry level um, overview, beginner's kind of you know first look at this rifle, is because I just put I just put 160 rounds through the barrel, so I have enough intermediate knowledge on the firearm. And I'm going to go through that with you today. Um, I had recently picked up a Black Creek Labs Siberian SRV2 and 556 or 223 Wild. The barrel is rated for both. I can't, I'm trying the forward facing, uh, or sorry, the actual camera facing, so I can't see what you guys can see. So I'm just going to go um, by the fly here and hopefully you guys can see everything. Um, like I said, 5.56, I just purchased a bunch of um, cost affordable gear to outfit it on. I got a Magpul foregrip, which acts as a hand stop for my thumb or, you know, to pull into your body. Multiple uses for this thing, really. It's not just a foregrip. Nobody, who, nobody really uses it as a foregrip anymore. Um, this rifle, I'm the second owner. The previous guy apparently only fired 60 rounds through the barrel. But after cleaning it thoroughly, like I do with every gun that I buy secondhand, um, I would have bought this brand new. But the guy selling it had such a good deal that um, I couldn't refuse. And uh, like I said, he only said he fired 60 rounds through the barrel. So, of course, me being an idiot believed him. Um, I would say it's closer to 100, just judging by the uh, carbon built up and stuff like that around the gas chamber and the barrel was pretty dirty. I uh, took a few brushes, swabs to clean it out to get it clean again. And I did a full detailed cleaning on it, took it, disassembled the whole entire thing except for the trigger group and uh, cleaned it and greased the action and everything like that. It is clean, or sorry, it is clear. Nothing in there. I still gotta get used to that. It has a bolt, it has a bolt release on this side and it also has a uh, mag release as well. So it's kinda, it takes a while to get used to for which one. And if you're a, a safety guy like me, um, if, you're, if you like to have your finger outside the trigger guard here, I'm going to start putting it down here, I think, just to break habit of accidentally hitting either the mag release or the uh, slide release unintentionally. So I'm just going to keep my finger down here from now. And it has a, a nice uh, indexing, nice crisp indexing for safety, uh, safety like on off. It has an exposed screw there, unfortunately. I don't really like that, and it has come loose on me. And that Allen size is kind of hard to find. I don't have one. I have to pick one up. But nice indexing safety. Um, I don't know a shit ton about this gun, um, but I do know what I have, what from my short experience, like I said, this is kind of the first look at it. Um, I have just a... Uh, Victory Optic 1 to 6 um, LVPO on top here. It has a, a throw lever on top, so it goes from 1 to 6 and you can go relatively fast. I uh, am going to blue lock tight that throw lever on there. I haven't done it yet. The rail system, um, I guess, yeah, we'll go ahead and talk accessories right now and get them out of the way. For these, those of you who are curious, uh, the rail system is an AccuSync scope ring uh, county lever, 30 millimeter scope rings. Um, it raises it. Um, it's a high profile one because, um, as you can tell, the stock basically goes straight all the way past the receiver into the barrel. There's no. Um, it's there's a little bit of an upper ridge on it, but it's not much. So. If you're running just regular rings and a scope, 
you have to really squish your face down there to get a good clear picture of your optic. Um, that's why I got a high profile, high profile cantilever on here so I can actually aim normal like a normal human being without squishing my face. So high profile is needed for that. And uh, it's been holding zero. Um, I sighted it in at 37 yards or something like that. So it would be good basically out to 200 um, without really making any kind of adjustments. Um, there's a nice, um, it has the Christmas tree going on inside. It's a little bit much for me. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. I can't tell. So I'm just gonna kind of move it around until you can kind of see it hopefully. Um, hopefully it's in the shot there somewhere. I can't really tell what you guys can see, but it has a Christmas tree. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff um, going on in that optic. It's, it's almost too much for me. I would prefer just a basic horseshoe with a dot and maybe a couple of mill dots underneath of that. And that's all I would want really. The Christmas tree is, it's a little bit much. Um, I could understand that being put on a bolt action where you have, you know, uh, out past a thousand yards and stuff like that. But uh, for an LVPO, it's a little unnecessary, I find. But I think they just throw that in there for aesthetics, to be honest. I don't know. But it was an affordable optic, so I picked it up. Um, this was in Canada. It's a Victory Optics. Um, it is, yeah, like I said, it's a 1 to 6. Uh, it's a seckle, second... Uh, plane it's focal plane so it's not first so it's a, not as expensive but you know I just wanted something on there that I could shoot and use for now while I save up and get something but because Canada we're under so many gun bans right now I just wanted the I just wanted the rifle and I wanted it outfitted with basic accessories so that I could use it until I eventually have enough money where I can get the better optics and better uh, accessories on the rifle itself. Um, like I said, it is clear. There's nothing in the chamber. It's complete. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just, it's a total guessing game for what you guys can see. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, the beauty of that is it's not live, so I can still go back and edit it if I need to. I have a pressure switch on top with the light. Two different, there's a, there's a push button, uh, push to hold, and then there's a push toggle. And there's a, I think there's a two different functions. There's a high, low, but I, uh, it's kind of awkward to, to use. Um, the light is a, it comes in a case, a lone fire, uh, professional lighting. Um, there's three different kinds. It's, it's water resistant. Uh, <laughs> it says explosion proof. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what Canadian uh, quality control standards are for <laughs> explosion proof stuff, but you know. Um, it comes in a cool little case. Um, it comes with a regular uh, button back on it, and it comes with a, uh, a pressure switch button on it. So that's kind of cool that it comes with everything. You don't have to buy a second back piece for it as well. Um, it didn't come with the uh, mounting tool or the mounting device. Hopefully you guys can see that. It didn't come with the mounting device on the pick rail. I had to buy that separately and I had to modify it so it fit this oblong wire uh, tooling design, but it works. So that's all that matters. I haven't tested it out at night yet, but it looks like it throws relatively decent. Um, you can't do any adjusting on it, unfortunately. It's just the simple, simple, simpler the better, right? You don't want it vibrating off or anything like that. The where I have it mounted, I don't really like it, but it's what I have for now. And to be honest, when I was shooting it at the range, when I was looking down the optic, down the barrel, I uh, I didn't even really notice the flashlight. It, it is there. If you're looking for it, you can see it. But your eyes aren't looking at the end of your gun. They're looking past that at potential bad guys or targets, right? So... You're looking at that, you're not looking at the light, but I can see the light, which is why I'm going to get a um, um, M-lock and I'm gonna put it up here on the side so it'll be way off to the side and closer to the muzzle, which is kind of where you want it. I do have a muzzle device as well coming in. I have a, uh, 
a muzzle brake slash flash hider coming in, another Canadian company. Um, it's just a $60 quick fix type thing. It's gonna it's gonna add a little bit of length to the barrel, which um, I don't really like, but that's okay, I suppose, for now. But yeah, this mount is gonna be disappearing and I'm just getting an M-Lock direct side mount here. So the, op the, the flashlight will be out of the way of the optic. You, got, you can't really have anything on the top rail when it comes to this gun because of the low uh, access to everything unless you had a really high optic mount but I don't want to I don't want to do that kind of thing I, I'm not the biggest fan of um, those red dots that stick out like a sore thumb it's basically just a giant snag point for me um, the setup is nice ergonomics are pretty solid for this thing I I've did a extensive research on this gun uh, lots. Of, I, I watched lots of um, YouTube videos and everything like that on everyone's opinions on it. Um, there was a couple of guys that had were uh, basically torture testing it, and it was failing quite a frequent, like quite a lot. But um, I don't know, man. Like lots of people don't know how to clean guns. I think, and for those people that are out there listening right now, thinking that oh, I have to rely on this gun. I want to see how far it can go before it breaks. You really want to do that to the gun that you're going to try and protect your life with? Like lots of, I'm not an American and we don't have the Second Amendment, but I mean, if I was an American and if I was carrying every day, I would be taking my gun out every day and giving it a little bit of protective oil treatment and I'd be unloading the magazine and just make, I'd just be doing a quick overview and a quick assessment of my firearm before I put it all back together and carry it again for the next day. You never know if something broke inside of it, if you don't use it and you don't shoot it and you carry it every day, you wanna, you wanna rely on it. You don't wanna throw it in the mud and be like, oh, if it can't handle it, I don't wanna carry it. It's, it's not, I don't know. Some people are just, I can't figure them out. It doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna rely on it, take care of it like it's your damn child for crying out loud. Anyway. That's just a little rant that I uh, go through. Also, um, I've seen people's version of clean and it is not clean. Lots of people do not know how to clean their guns properly. Um, the previous owner of this one was one, for example. Um, he had said in his ad that he only fired it 60 times or so and cleaned it before putting it away. Well, I can tell you right now that that's not true because when I look down the barrel, you can see burnt powder flakes laying in the bottom of the barrel and not not pitting but um if he would have left it for at least another year or so there probably would be pitting there was carbon and residue i i it took the brass bristle brush 22 caliber jag bristle brush through the barrel and then ballast all back and forth probably 20 or 30 times before it finally came out clean and now it is clean. And I shot it after that because I wanted to fully clean it before I went quick to judge on it. So I took it apart, cleaned it after I shot it as well. So it is completely cleaned and everything and ready to go for another day. Um, because the reason I can tell you that it was more than 60 rounds, because I fired over 140 rounds, um, I cleaned the barrel and it only took three swabs to clean the barrel versus the 30 swabs that it took when I first got it and took it apart and cleaned it. So other people's version of clean and mine are opposite ends of the spectrum, unfortunately, but people need to learn how to clean their guns. That is that. Is that. Um, you can get some AR aftermarket accessories on this guy. Uh, the grip, you can get the uh, Magpul, Magpul, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can get the AR style grip for that, which is what I might do because it's nice and squishy and it's, it feels better on the hand and it also has a little bit more bulk. The back of the trigger guard here, um, when you're doing certain checks and, and stuff, my knuckles rub on that and it, it's kind of annoying. So I'm thinking if I get a Magpul um, one, it'll be a little bit beefier and squishier and it won't dig into my hand as much as, uh, you know, as possible. Um, so, oh, I just touched the, oh, no, we're good. Um, so, what I would have to say about this gun is, well, first of all, if you're in the same situation I was, 
say, <sighs> say you want to find a 223 semi-automatic that is not restricted or not banned, you don't have very many options in Canada anymore. You have, you can get a bullpup, you can go with a Tavor, which is $4,000 basically retail. Even the base model one is over three grand. So <laughs> that's double the price of this, if not more. Um, you can go that route if you really like to and retrain. If you were an AR guy before, you have to retrain your muscle memories to bullpup style versus AR 180 style. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you have to retrain yourself and the Tavor is not cheap. So if, if you're a, a spoiled rich farm kid that has lots of money disposable, right, you can go ahead and get one. But if you're like me and you have to work for your own money and pay bills, which are getting ridiculous, um, you want to find the most utilitarian piece of hardware cost effective as possible. So that's why I got this. It was a choice between this or two other guns. And those two other guns are both bull pups, but they are not Tavors. And why? Because they're about half the price of Tavors and they function the same. If not, well, basically the same. They just have slightly worse ergonomics. Um, mind you, the uh, Caltech RDB has pretty good ergonomics. I like that gun. I, have, I was able to shoot that gun and it felt nice in the hands and it was easy to hold zero at 100 yards, no problem. Um, that's offhand too, not at bench. Um, very, very nice piece of hardware, um, but after extensive research, I decided not to go with that one because of the downward ejection um, issues, and it's really hard to chamber check. You, actually, I don't even know if you can chamber check unless you flip the gun all the way like this and look inside the little port in the bottom of the stock, because that's where it ejects, ejects straight down from the stock. Um, so between that and the rail being plastic, like the top Picatinny rail is plastic, the fore, fore end and foregrip and everything are all plastic. The whole gun is basically plastic. You have to buy a uh, Irish Lucky, uh, Irish Lucky something rather, handguard. I can't remember what it's called. Lucky Irishman. I'm dyslexic, so there we go. You can get the Lucky Irishman handguard, which is actually aluminum or metal, um, to replace the, that stock. And then you can get a metal rail replacement as well. But the way I see it is if you're spending 14 to even two grand on a rifle, it should be ready to go out of the box. You shouldn't have to buy upgrades like the WK. That wasn't even in my... Top 10 of choices, by the way. The WK, um, so many upgrades are needed for those. Even the new generation ones, you still have to upgrade it. Um, it's just, it's a piece of junk in my opinion. I'll, I'll never buy one. So there's that, there's WK, there's the uh, m and there's the uh, um, 762, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I decided not to go with that one either because uh, I heard that there's, Lots of overgassing issues and terrible catastrophic failures and stuff like that. Um, again, you have to buy upgrade parts and everything. Uh, I did the most research on this Black Creek Labs rifle. It's not by any means. Don't worry, I'll go through the cons eventually. But it's not the best gun you can get. It, well, it might be. Um, there's a few other models out there. I can't remember quite what they are, but there's a... There's a kit that you can get that converts your AR into a 180, pretty much. It's kind of it's like a basically a new upper. You keep you keep your AR lower, I think, and then you go to a. And it's I can't I don't know how exactly it works, but it's expensive, and I already sold my AR, so I don't have it anymore, so I can't do that anyways. Um, so there's a few reasons why I wanted this was because ergonomically, you got. You got full ambidextrous uh, safety. Um, you don't have an ambi um, magazine release, but you could. I think. I don't know. You can't. You can't switch this. Which can't. You can't switch it over. I don't think. 
But you do have an Ambi Bolt release, which is kind of nice for uh, those lefty guys out there. Um, there's a what else is what else do I like about this? Um, I, I I like the sleekness of it. It looks kind of futuristic. It does have a heavy barrel on it. I think it's one and an eighth twist for the barrel length. Um, it's a little bit of a heavier barrel, but I mean, you get the little dweebs that um, make fun of guns. Oh, why can't they just use modern skinny barrels or you know slim barrels? Well, those are the Probably the Ipsic guys that are bitching, the little 80 pound soaking wet guys that can't even carry a dummy over their backs um, while they're running a course. Um, it's got such a heavy barrel, it's not bad. It's, it's really not bad. Lots of guns in Canada have extremely long barrels. They're basically all DMRs. Um, this guy falls in that nice category where it is not. I'm actually really lucky because I have I'm a shorter stockier guy no pun intended um, with this stock fully collapsed if it was any longer I would have to swap the stock out it is pretty long even in fully uh, full collapsed positioning I could not run it if it was if it came out of the box and it was, uh, sorry, it's very stiff. I haven't moved it much. And if it, if, if it was right there, that's really long for me. Like, that's, that, it's, my shoulders are kind of short. So right there is absolutely perfect for me. Um, for the weir people, for the smaller people, you might want to replace this stock with something else. Um, but it is a Magpul stock. It is a Zukov Magpul stock. So... That's pretty cool. It even says it on the back here. Um, what else? The trigger pull on this gun is... It's a little bit rough, but it's not as rough as people say it is. I think people are just too Gucci when it comes to 5.56 five, guns. I've noticed that about the AR guys versus the uh, AK guys. The AK guys are more rugged, rough, down-to-earth, like just run whatever you get. But the AR guys are more more like dainty and uh, <laughs> um, princessy about their uh, ergonomics and stuff like that. I mean, I kind of am too, but not to some of the extent that they are. The trigger is pretty. Oh man, it's it's kind of rough. It's a really grindy pull, and I think there's a pro there's a way you can smooth that out. Um, I haven't taken apart the trigger system yet, but. The crispiness of the actual pull of the trigger is pretty good. And the reset, it's it's a crisp reset, but it's a little bit grindy going to that reset. So if that makes any sense at all. Um, but when you're when when you're in a shit hits the fan situation, you're not gonna really be feeling that. You're gonna be the, the pull is a little bit in the little bit a little bit stout. Like you have to It'd be a good mill serp trigger for sure. You have to want to pull the trigger to pull it. Definitely. But you can get AR triggers and replace them. I might do that at some point. Um, I think there's the, the standard AR 3.5 or 4 pound trigger is what I would want to go with. It's about 100 and some, I think it's 160 bucks Canadian for that trigger. And I think that's what I would go to. Um, but yeah, no. So cons. Okay. Um, do I have any more pros, first of all? Uh, I mean, the overall design is sleek. It's it's nice. It's slim. You can really wrap your hand around it for, like, accessories, so to speak. Um, I was thinking about putting 45 offset irons on this gun, but I think with because of the low bore problem that we have... The low uh, LOS, it wouldn't make sense to do that. So I'm going to run optic light, I guess, and we'll go with that. Um, I haven't gotten a sling for it yet. I would like to get a, I'm not familiar with the quick detach slings. This thing does have a few options for quick detach. There's one here, one here, and one in the, the, the butt. Or you could M lock one farther up here if you wanted. Um, I don't know which way I would like to go, either M-Lock or Quick Detach. I don't know what style I want. I, I, for some reason, I don't trust 
I don't fully trust the quick detach slings. I don't know what it is about it, but just looking at them doesn't look 100% to me for some reason. I don't, I don't fully trust it. Maybe I have to use somebody's first to see if I'll like it, but I just, I feel like it's not beefy enough. You know, I want something that's solid, something that's like almost welded on versus just a ball bearing push in thing. I don't know. To me, that doesn't seem right for some reason. But okay, so let's go through some of the, uh, oh, sorry. I'm not done with the con or the pros yet. It has a, I don't I hope you guys can see this stuff, man. I hope I'm close enough. It has a um, already stock flared magwell. So when you're putting in a magazine, it allows for, you know, it's like having a, a magwell, a flared magwell on your on your pistols too. It's it's pretty, I don't, I mean, I don't really have an issue finding magwells, but maybe for competition or something like that. It's something that you would want to have on a bullpup, a uh, bullpup for sure, because you're not looking at it as you're going in. You're kind of back here, unless you have the gun way up vertical to find the, you know, maybe I'm just not trained enough in a bullpup, but um, I definitely would have had to retrain uh, muscle memory and everything when it came to getting a bullpup. Um, oh, sorry, I kind of got sidetracked. The other bullpup that I was debating on was the Type 97. I know that's kind of, or yeah, yeah, the Type 97. I know that's kind of weird. But the Type 97 is, um, it's, it's rugged and it's bulletproof. Uh, it just runs. It's, it's a solid, um, it's a solid gun, but the ergonomics suck. Uh, even the, the only gen worth getting, the third gen, um, Type 97, the first one is not even, I don't know why people own that thing. Like if you own a first gen, you must really love reciprocating frickin' uh, charging handles, but uh, that's not my thing. Um, the third gen, even with the third gen, um, I don't know why. On the on the stock, they have the safety back here, and they have the bolt release back here. And the bolt release is, it's not even a paddle like this. It's like a little button. You almost have to get your pinky in there, and, and then it works. And then everything is like right by the action it's kind of annoying um like it makes sense like construction wise but it doesn't make sense like actual ergonomics you want to check everything here so you're not moving too much if you want to put the safety on that thing you have to take your hand off the gun come way back flip the safety and then come all the way forward to regrip your gun it's just it wasn't ergonomically there for me to pull the trigger on a type 97 the trigger was pretty good on that though i won't i won't i won't lie the trigger on the gen 3 type 97 is very nice same with the trigger on the Keltec rdb nice trigger um this guy is this guy's trigger is okay if i can figure out a way to file down some burrs or even polish something in there to make it a smoother pull i probably won't even spend the 160 dollars on an ar trigger drop in trigger um but some of the cable, okay, well, let's, let's go over some cons now. I think it's about time I hit the cons with this guy. Here, I'll flip it around so you're not staring at the same side the whole time. Um, okay, so when you take the bolt out of this thing, there's two guide rods and a spring for each one. Um, and then there's little retaining uh, washers on the, on the front face of the, of the, of the guide rods. And that's what it comes with factory. So it's kind of cool. You can take the gun apart, pull the whole assembly out and clean it and drop it back in. Um, kind of cool. Well, very cool actually, but I kind of wish that they um, beefed up those little retaining rings um, because I've only fired, well, I don't know what the other guy fired. Uh, who knows, anywhere from 60 to 200 rounds or more. Um, he only said 60 rounds, so that's why I'm starting at 60. I don't know how much, how much he shot. Um, but for that, uh, I don't know. Um, already, one of those rings have sheared off completely. It looks like they're built out of pop cam material. Like, they're super thin shims, and it's like they're just strong enough to hold the mechanism in place while you take the bolt out. But when you're firing it back and forth, it's slamming into them. So it doesn't last very long. I don't know why 
they wouldn't put something more beefier on that. It's not a huge deal because it's all self-contained in here anyways. It's not like the bolt's going to fly through the gas system and out the barrel <laughs> without those little retaining pins. But it, it's nice to have the whole group come out as one. You can clean it, uh, grease it up, and put it back in without having to worry about holding three different things while you slide it in place. Now that's what I have to do because both of them broke. Um, so I want to say around 200 rounds, those things render useless already, which kind of sucks, but I mean, it's, it's what we got. So, um, what else? What other cons? And that's not even that huge of a con, but it's, it's a con. I had some light primer strikes, and I think it was because it was a new gun to me, and I was being ginger with it. And by ginger, I mean, um, let's say I put a mag in, empty mag, and I work the action. It's obviously not going to do that, but I'll hear, I'll release the bolt. And I, I just, I, I kind of brought the bolt forward gingerly. And what happens is it doesn't close the bolt fully. Some people may say, hey, what the hell is going on? Like, it's not, you have to actually, you need to hear that, that forward assist. So you can't be ginger with it. You can't rack it back and gingerly bring it forward because the bolt will not close all the way. Now it's closed all the way. It's kind of weird, but you just don't be ginger with it. You just rack it and let it go. Treat it like an SKS. You have to, you have to roughly, aggressively operate and manipulate an SKS for it to function as it should. For this guy, it's the same way. Make sure that bolts all the way forward. It, another issue is if you are doing a, uh, a chamber check and you release the bolt slowly, it's not chambered. There you go. You hear that last little click? That's it chambering. So if you do a chamber check, okay, and then you... You think you're good to go and then all of a sudden you get a light strike oh no what happened your bolt is not all the way forward so that's one issue that I had with it and I noticed that nobody else mentioned that in any of the other SRV2 um, reviews on YouTube so like I said this is my first impression because um, I've, I've shot it almost 200 times so I feel like I'm allowed to at least do an introduction impression type video um, it's, it's a solid gun. It, it definitely has room for improvements, um, little things. Um, I think it's cool that you can, there's a, there's a brass deflector here that once it gets worn out or messed up, you can actually replace it. That's cool. I like, I like stuff like that. Um, little, little things like that get me. Um, uh, let's see, the gas system, there is a screw. Um, I don't know if the previous guy Loctited it, or if it's a newer model and it came from factory Loctited. Um, but there was Loctite on it, so it was, I was surprised. That was one of the first things I checked because there was people saying that they were shooting these guns and the gas system was loosening up over time. Um, there's, there's another thing that people were kind of complaining about and I'll show you. Open, on an open bolt, the gas, like if they just had a retaining, um, spring or something it doesn't really bother me though it's not that annoying like you can't really run stealthily anyways you're going to make noise when you're running so i don't know it doesn't bother me too much just i mean when are you ever going to be running with an open bolt empty mag anyways like drop in a new mag close the bolt slap your safety on and then move then you don't really have much much noise there at all so I don't know. It's personal. Like I said, personal opinion reviews. Um, but that's my style of reviews anyways, our personal opinion reviews. So I really like this gun. Um, I don't really have too much to bitch about yet, but I will do update videos, say every couple hundred rounds I shoot. I'll come here and I'll... Uh, I'll show you guys, and I plan on reloading ammunition for this as well. I know it says in the book not to use um, reloads, otherwise you void the warranty, but I don't have warranty with this anyways, so, and with the price of 223 or 556 right now, at like a dollar a round, um, no, I'm gonna reload. 
I'm careful enough. I don't go over max powder charges. I'm going to be using a 155 grain jacketed, full metal jacket bullet with three loads. I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a, a Lee, you know, 5.56.223 die set, and I'm going to use Varget powder, and I'm going to stay around the uh, recommended load for the most accurate load for that bullet and everything. So I'm not I'm not going to hot rod my rounds. Oh, it's 5.56. It can handle a little more heat. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to go by the book, and I'm staying by the book. That's how you blow 50 cals up and almost lose your eye. Um, anyways. So, I don't really have much to bitch about this gun. This rail system held this thing true for 160 rounds. I can't remember how many rounds you fired that day. Either 140 or 160. Um, we sighted in at 35 yards, shot it, and we got about two MOS. And that's with uh, a mix of ammo. I was shooting um, magazines with 5.56 and 2.23 in them. So you got different, you know, and I was shooting at 100 yards. So I was still getting two MOS even with those. And that wasn't at a bench rest or a lead sled. That was just in my, <clears throat> that was just in my hands like this, shooting at 100 yards, as stable as I could at 100 yards. And I was getting two MOS. So I think that's excellent. I think that's, I think that's really, really good for, especially for two different uh, technical bullet types running through there. Um, this cool mag, <laughs> this is kind of cool. One, one cool thing about Canada that we're allowed to do. These are technically pistol mags and it even says on the side, 10 round pistol mags. So if you had a DMR 5.56 that held AR magazines, I would go this route legal, for legality wise. You got 10 rounds. SKSs don't even get 10 rounds. I mean... They do from factory, but they're pinned, so you can't get 10 rounds. But you can now either put this on a bag or a bipod, and you can put a, if you want to put a, an actual scope on here, like a, a 10 or whatever power optic, and you can reach out a lot farther, and you got 10 rounds, which is pretty sweet. And you can get the, the mags that have, um, see what I mean? I was trying to do, <laughs> it's going to take some training. Um, that's the bolt release and that's the mag release. <laughs> it's gonna take some training. I'm used to my DPMS, like I said, I don't I don't have that feature on the DPMS. And it's been many moons since I've shot that thing anyways. So, but um, first impressions, overall view, I, I, I literally don't have anything negative to say about it other than those retaining um, bits being sheared off the, the rods. Um, so far that's pretty much the only option and I had light strikes like I said but that was because of the the gingerness of the bolt not being slammed forward um, other than that there has been no issues with it love it so far and I hope it keeps running as smoothly as it does um, I think that's all I, I got I got a muzzle device coming in the mail it's a muzzle brake flash hider I can't remember exactly what it's called, but um, I'll get into the accessories a little more so you guys kind of see. Uh, this is a Canadian Canadian company, I believe. Um, it's got one year warranty on it, which is kind of nice. It comes with these rings, 30 mil uh, rings for pick uh, for pick, pick rails, but they're not good enough on this rifle. You need more. It comes with... Um, it comes with Allen key hardware and everything for the for the scope to go on the gun, and then I have um, this for the rail system. Like I said, UTG uh, AccuSync scope rings, um, and then I just have a uh, Magpul vertical stub grip on there, and then my flashlight was a, a Lone Fire. The Star of Dawn. I think this is a Canadian one too. You can also get this from VectorOptics.ca. Um, I might put their link in the description. I'm not too much of a uh, of a link hound, but for Canadians that want to find affordable uh, gear to run their firearms like right away out of the box, this stuff was very affordable. This this optic ran me at $220 cash. 
So, one to six, 24. Yeah, that was 220 bucks. The light was 60 bucks. The grip was on sale for $15, which is Canadian, which is outstanding. Um, this uh, cantilever was uh, $30 on Amazon. And I think those are all the accessories that I have on this thing right now. So that's that's pretty much all I got to show you for this, this video. A quick overview. Um, so far, very pumped about it. Uh, if you get one of these, go over it, Loctite it. Make sure you have your bolt nice and oiled. You want a nice lubed bolt system, even up in the inside, inside the, the receiver where your bolt rides in. You want to have it nice oiled and lubed up and everything. Otherwise, you're just going to get heavy friction and you might actually get binding issues. For some reason, they decided to paint the inside of the receiver, which I find kind of silly, but... I don't know why you would paint the inside of a receiver because it's just there's friction inside of there anyways maybe just to see the kind of wear i don't know um yeah so i got nothing else really for this video like i said i'll update as i go and maybe we'll even show a, a couple of videos of shooting this bad boy um in the field do some do some long range well not long range but longer range testing with it and uh some closer quarter style shooting and we're going to do my style not some influencer style um everyone's tactical um awareness and stuff like that is different than everyone else's like to each is their own so i'll just when i sh when i do videos on youtube with tactical shooting it's going to be my way of doing it i'm not trained professionally by anybody so I just kind of develop my own style of training. I'll get into that in a different video. Um, so yeah, I need to get a sling. I need to get a muzzle device. And then um, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know what else I'm going to throw on here. Maybe a grip. Um, Magpul grip for it. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything offhand that I... Um, that I'm going to slap on there. I might get some kind of rubber protective uh, covers for the optic. Um, you can get bumper covers. Um, I think they just they just they pop over all of these, all of your your quick adjustments, and they're rubber so that if your gun hits the ground and bounces or slides, you're not going to damage the crap out of your optic. It's got kind of protective. Uh, rubberized sleeves and stuff over top to kind of protect it and then everything's locked tight in place so hopefully nothing breaks if it does take a spill anyways um, I'm sure this video is long enough for you guys so this is the Black Creek Labs SRV2 Siberian and uh, keep shooting guys I'm, I'm excited to have this gun I can't wait to post more videos on it so until next time Dusty Tucker signing out.